Hey guys, welcome back to the Merit Partners Podcast. We have a great friend and local Porsche legend here with us today, Mr. Lee Keen. Thanks for being with us, man. It's awesome to be here. It's always fun. Always, always fun. Always fun to have you. We did some, some driving today, yep. drove some cars. We'll yep. get into that in a little bit. But I want, for those who don't know you, I want to give a little background. So I was introduced to you actually through YouTube. I don't think you know this. I don't know this, but I'm not <laughs> 10 years ago. And I yes. looked at it today to see, because I, so I think that was 10 years ago. And sure enough, it was 10 years ago. The video of you driving in the rain at the Nürburgring in the GT3R. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, legendary video, in my opinion. Uh, and I saw that. And I was like, gosh, this guy knows how to drive. So you're a race car driver. What's the history there? What, what got you into racing? How did that come about? When did you decide, I want to pursue this? <clears throat> uh, I mean, I grew up in middle Georgia. Um, dirt track was like all around NASCAR. Like my uncle loved NASCAR. Um, but I grew up going to Daytona 24 and stuff like that. Yeah. But we weren't racers. My dad wasn't a driver or a racer until the late 90s. And I was probably like 13 or 14. And we started going to the racetrack. He started doing DE events. Um, he had a 930, a really nice 930 that we would, you know, go to the, go to the races mm -hmm. with. And, uh, but he sold that because it was a street car. He did one thing right off the bat, which was correct which was you don't want to really race or track really hard your um, Road street car. car. Yeah. Unless you need it's a 4 or something. You need to, well, yeah. <laughs> well, nowadays there's plenty. But yeah, this really yeah. nice 930. And, yeah. and basically people are like, no, you, you don't need to turn that into a race car. So he went out and got a 993 GT2R that had finished at Le, second Le Mans GT2 class like three years prior. The red one? The red car, yeah. Okay. So like that made no sense at all. He has zero track experience. <laughs> And back then you couldn't even, um, you couldn't drive. So I couldn't drive until I was 18. Those were the rules. Yeah. I ended up racing against kids that had been racing go-karts since they were like five. Yeah. One kid started racing, driving cup cars on track. You know, his dad owned a, a super cup team. So he was racing or driving during test days and stuff, cup cars when he was 14. Um, so all these European kids, four years, that advantage. was later, this is later on in my career. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, that's not, but anyways, uh, so anyway, I, I skateboarded around the paddock for a while and then finally start, was able to drive. We didn't do carts, like I said, so couldn't drive anything until I was 18. So I did the Panos racing school, yeah. which was, uh, at road Atlanta. Yep. Mm -hmm. And my coaches were, ended up being people, team owners and co-drivers like Andrew Davis um that I, I eventually co-drove with and, and won championships with so yeah it started small club racing my dad was club racing now at this point uh he did learn that the gt2 was like way overkill <laughs> i mean he did race it a couple of times and win some races but yeah. he jumped in the deep end total yeah. over yeah. yeah like what's that the, equivalent of getting today for a track uh, like I mean, a an, R, an rsr yeah or just no yeah an r no an rsr i mean it was the Jeez. the gt2 r back back then was the was the top of the I mean, 99, it was still racing at Le Mans. It was, I think 2000s, it was still racing. Um, so it'd be like, yeah, if, if a guy had a, had some. His first track car was an RSR. His first track, yeah. yeah. Does first, your dad have that kind of mentality? He's like, we're going to do it. We're going to go out. I, I mean, time. back then, the car was pretty cheap. I mean, it was a lot different than today. Um, a guy that owned, the guy that owned it was a, was a PCA club racer. So it was kind of known to be a, a club car, yeah. um, or it was known in the, in the PCA world. Um, it was too much car for that guy, so he was selling it to get something else. So that's just kind of how it was, I guess, with those. But yeah. it was hard to, to I guess, say no to that car. Yeah. I mean, he still had the Lamar tech sticker on the roll bar, like that's cool. just crazy cool car. Yeah. Um, and that's how it was again, 20 years ago, 25 years ago. You know, you yeah. do that. That was not super abnormal. But then he did buy a 993 Super Cup car, which was way more. Mm -hmm. And the first time he drove that, he was like, "Man, I like driving this car because uh, it's more approachable and, yeah. and just you know doesn't try to basically kill you um, every every lap." Yeah. Uh, and that's what I learned to drive in. So my first. Then how many years did you do racing? Yeah. Well, I pretty it, it was I moved pretty fast at that point okay. um, because I didn't really drive that car till I was 18, and then it was immediately you know I think one and a half years later. I was in uh, some professional races that my dad was sticking me in some cars, uh, which was also very reasonable back then. You could you could do that kind of stuff. Um, and within two years, I think I had my first 
professional podium. And yeah, my first podium was in 2004, and then I started basically driving in 2002. Okay. Yeah, so within two years of driving a car on track, more or less, I'd already had a podium in the Grand Am Rolex series. That's awesome. As a, as a finishing driver wow. uh, in that class, racing against Randy wow. Popes and Andy no, Lally no was, no was, was in those classes. So I was third, Randy yeah. and Andy were <laughs> second. Uh, first Those are great second. names to be with. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it was yeah, cool. It's okay to lose to them. No, yeah. I got my yeah. butt whooped by Randy uh, <laughs> plenty of times. And then, you know, a couple of years. Um, it, yeah, it, it was crazy, actually. It just kind of went really fast. Um, yeah. And it was, it was a great timing-wise, great timing back then. You know, now I think what I did would be probably impossible. But, like, yeah. back then, timing-wise was good. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, five years later, I was on the podium at Le Mans 24. And, Wow. Nurburgring uh, yeah. 24 overall podium um, I think there's like 12 classes or something or there's a ton I was like the only American even on a podium for any class that year um, some championships and yeah about about a good 10 year run in yeah. the racing world did a lot of cool things that I'm, I'm proud of yeah. mm -hmm. what's the story behind that video on YouTube of you racing in the rain. That, that is, if you guys haven't seen it, go to, I think The Drive has it now on YouTube. Yeah. It's almost a Yeah, it's called Rain views. Dance. Rain Dance. Yeah, I'm like, the rain dance. I didn't even think about it. It's been 10 years now, which is, which is, is the crazy. camera on your helmet or is it? Yeah, because okay. I was so tall um, <laughs> and GoPros were still fairly new. But yeah, because I was so tall, I could mount the camera on my chin, basically. Yeah. Whereas most drivers, if they mounted it on their chin, then they're just looking at the steering wheel, so it wouldn't yeah. work. Yeah. So I can, and I, JF Musil, JF Musil did the drive channel, um, which was like the first car channel on YouTube to reach a million subscribers and stuff like that. Like it was a big deal back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Uh, they did like a, a lot of cool stuff actually. Um, and I had the idea to do this driver's eye thing. Yeah. So I actually, Tommy Milner with um, Factory Corvette. We had some prototype guys. That series got around, but that was really the first one of the driver's eye series that we did. Yeah. And it and it it was very ideal. I was recording the whole weekend. There's a longer version that has interesting stuff like on during my qualifying, a piece of rubber came up and hit the kill switch. <laughs> <laughs> on, at the on the top outside of the, of the car yeah so yeah so i'm going i, I don't know 140 or whatever <laughs> and the car just sh everything just shuts off i mean everything no power steering just everything i'm like Ugh, and i'm like okay so i pull over and um i kind of get behind a wall and there's a corner worker basically like you probably thought the car was dead yeah so i mean no I, it was like yeah, yeah what what, what happened done. you know qualifying's over or whatever so I got out of the car and then normally the corner workers want to put the car somewhere and just forget about it and just tell you to go sit down and so they can watch the track. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, eh, that really doesn't make any sense. I was like, is there, there's no way, well, I don't know, I'll pop the hood. And sure enough, yeah, it was, it was like an old, those were pull strings and somehow got caught. And which is something that would happen every once in a while. Yeah. You hear stories about it. Yeah. So I flipped the car back to life, cranked it up. Went back out, finished qualifying, but Nurburgring, there's 200 cars, so you only get the Jeez. first lap. That was the first lap that you wouldn't have traffic in. Yeah. And I don't even remember where, where we even qualified any, anyways, but yeah, that's on the, that video. There's like a lot that's of cool. interesting things that happened that, that weekend. That sounds like racing right there. It's totally so racing. Just yeah. totally died. Nurburgring <laughs> throws <laughs> everything at you. It's the craziest place in the world. It's like my favorite place in the world where I proposed to my wife. Like it's just oh, cool. the yeah. best place you could ever be if you, if you're, if you like cars. Yeah. Um, but that was, yeah, because I was so tall, the camera angle worked yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Um, makes sense. Has and, that ever, has your height ever been an issue in racing? Not for the most part with Porsches, but Ferraris and some other stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I a hundred percent have like tried to drive cars and just been really uncomfortable. Yeah. And I actually raced the six hours, hours of the Glen in 2013 in a Ferrari and it was set up for short guy. And my knees were like, I think the, the steering wheel, my, but my knees were on the dash yeah. and I, my toes were like this. And I did this, you know, I did two hour <laughs> stint during the six hour race. And yeah. It was all good, yeah. but like, it was like, I miss Porsches in, in that. What's and, funny is when we did the hypercar invitational, Burt fit in the 918, Burt fit in the Pagani, Burt fit in the uh, P1. He did not fit in the LaFerrari. 
couldn't with an Italian. Couldn't even, couldn't even it's an like, Italian it was just thing. not going to yeah, work. It's an Italian thing. I, yeah. I just drove, yeah, I drove a friend's 360 Challenge car, and yeah, I didn't fit in it. It's, the, it's an Italian thing. Yeah. I mean, or a Ferrari sure. thing. Yeah. They just small don't, people. they just yeah. don't yeah. care, really. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> yeah. don't ship an F40 to a six foot five. <laughs> yeah. F40 is like ultimate dream. I mean, I'm staring at one right now. Yeah. And, and like, it's always been, of course, it's, you know, I'm sure most everybody, but yeah. when you sit in it, the F52, when I sit in it, it just, all that kind of goes out the window. Well, the good and thing that's, with the F50 is you can take the top off and. Yeah. And put a camera on your. <laughs> yeah, you can see above. You yeah. put it out here and see above the windshield. Yeah. But I mean, that's one reason. Like the 911 has always been. I mean, yeah. you know, as most of my career, yeah. I've I had success in Ferraris and and wonderful race cars, 458, GT, mm -hmm. uh, Le Mans car, mm -hmm. uh, and the GT3 car, incredible car. The 458 chassis is mm -hmm. incredible chassis. It. Yeah. So but, one of our favorites as well. Yeah. It's, I mean the the special. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyways, because I'm so tall, the 911 worked out yeah. really well. Um, and so has that led to your ownership of cars as well in your garage? Is it mostly Porsche? Exclusively Porsche? <laughs> I mean, I grew up in a 930. Yeah. So it was always going to be Porsche. Yeah. Um, when, like, when we, we were watching those, the old videos, the old yeah, the VHSs, stuff earlier, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when I went to Daytona 24 in 95, for the first time, we cruised down to my dad's 930, stopped by Brumos on the way down. Um, I, there, I was like, I, I knew nothing. There, I knew everything about every Porsche there. I knew nothing about anything else there because my dad didn't teach me anything other than the Porsches. Yeah. And basically he's like, like, this is like die hard, like what you see in like college football and stuff like that. I mean, like it has to be Porsche. Like it was, and that's how he was. And like, I basically couldn't even, I secretly liked, I mean, there's a Bugatti EB110 race car, I think in 95 or 96 that ran Daytona 24, just like a one-off random yeah. thing. That was really cool. And I see, I, like, I loved all that stuff. I'm, I, I love all cars yeah. really, yeah. but yeah, it was always going to be Porsche and, and What's in your garage right now? Son, you can have any car as long as it's a Porsche. Yeah, yeah. I mean, pretty, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You can, I, I can pull for any car as long as it's a Porsche. Yeah, um, yeah I have a variety of, of Porsches. This starts with a 70 race car, and it's kind of built like, an, like a 73 RSR. Cool. Three liter, full on race car, yep. HSR, vintage race car. That checks one box because old school, like there's nothing like those really old like the early 70s was a really cool period. I mean, those cars were winning like a, a 911 one seventy three Daytona overall, yeah. you know, Sebring overall. Um, the 911 was just like, yeah. It was, what they did from like 69 to like 74. Yeah. Well, really through the 70s, cause then the 934 came, the turbocharger came, the 935 came by the end of 79 years. So like 69 to 79, the development of a, of a 911 yeah. is like, it's just insane. Yeah. In, like crazy, crazy. You know, up until winning Le Mans overall in 79 with the 935. Yeah, um, yeah the guy <clears throat> I stayed at when we went to Velocity had a 70 RSR clone. Yes. And it was, and it's a good build. It's a really, really good build. It's not, you know, the best paint job in the world, but that's not the point of the car. It's just a really good build. And it is a blast to drive. It is so much fun. Those cars are great. Driving one of those, I mean, there's nothing like that. Yeah. And it's 50 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it's fat. I mean, I did, my old car is, is carved. It's a three liter. It's 1,900 pounds. I mean, it's very Jeez. simple. And, um, you know, I did a 29 at Road Atlanta in that car mm -hmm. on Hoosiers, which is like, which is really like crazy fast. That's faster but, than what so a lot of people drive a, a club sport. It's a, a 50, club sport. yeah, it's a 50 year old car. Um, so Gosh. it's just so cool. And it shows you how good those cars were. That's yeah. why they won those races. I mean, it's, it's amazing what, you know, the, the 911 platform and that, that was within the first, you know, decade of, of when the 911 was even. Does that car move around a lot? Oh, because... like crazy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It moves around okay. like high speed. You, yeah. you lose a lot of downforce. Yeah. Um, but it being so light and, and it's predictable. Some people would probably say it's not pr predictable. Yeah. Uh, it is tricky in a lot of ways to drive, but it's still very predictable and, and 
me. Basically, it, you, you ask for something and it, it gives it, it more or less gives it back to you. That's cool. Um, yeah, so. I that, did the Colorado Grand, the 73 Career RS. Yeah. Compared to all the other cars there, obviously it was you know super fast, but it was just it was just a great car you could really get on and go hard, but also just ride comfortably, yeah. you know, at high speeds, but also low. And I was amazed at. I think it's really how lightweight the car is, but just how the performance of it. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean the the just the architecture of the way they did the suspension, the way did they did the whole car, the design, of course. Right. Um, and another thing too is like on especially on like Colorado Grand event like with you, reliability is going to be good too in those cars. Like it's fantastic. you're like going to these different places every day. Yeah. So like you could Thousands show up in some miles. 50s Ferrari yeah. and be the man, <laughs> but like. Have your, have your tow truck you get there. Yeah. 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 I'll be driving it back to the hotel. 73 RS, you know, you're going to have a smile on your back. face the yeah. whole time. Yeah. And, H and the car is easy, you know, yeah. easy. That's another thing I love about 911s is like, in, you know, like the 993 RS. Yeah that I have, you can go to the dealership and you can get like AC knobs or like yeah. a lens, like a, a tail lens or something like that. It's yeah. the same as a 993 C2. Yeah. Um, so you're not spending crazy money on these one -off. parts, pieces, yeah. one-off yeah. pieces. Yeah. Even though the value of the car, the car itself is very valuable and it is expensive. That's a good point. You you can maintain it. You can you can do all these things, and it's it's not expensive at all to to live with, basically. That's a good point. Um, I think so it's a great point. It's it's the accessibility of all the parts, right? And uh, and the 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 feedback from the factory in terms of just they're going to support the factory support that you're going to get for these cars long term because they've been doing it for so many years. They're there. They're not yeah. going anywhere. That's why I love just maintaining the provenance of these cars because the factory is always going to be there to support with parts. It's awesome. Yeah. And they're building on, it. I mean, they have incredible support now and they're, they're building on it, you know, even more. So right. the future looks even better for parts. Right. Whereas, you know, you used to be worried about parts, you know, in 10 years, we'll never be able to get this part. Now, I mean, so basically like those cars are super easy to own, yeah. you know, yeah. and that's a, Big benefit. So the, the 99 in the garage is the old race car, the 993 RS, my Safari car, of course, Keen Project Safari, yep. my first one. Yep. Um, my blend of uh, you know being a redneck and growing up in Middle Georgia and then racing Porsches <laughs> all over the world. Um, and in variety again, they're all 911s. I'm a like guilty as charged as far as being a 911 guy. Yeah. Like you know people. They, if you try to talk to me about your 914 or your 944, like I'm gonna be like, that's cool, like I love it, it's yeah. Porsche, but like I'm really, I just don't know. I'm a 911 yeah. guy, yeah, I yeah. don't. Um, and becoming the 997 king, I feel like. The nine, well, the me. 997, most of my career was was in a 997. Race cars, yeah. The, the, yeah. the really good part of my career, I would say, was in was in a 997. Yeah. Um, so that's what built my career. And so the Frog, my Frog, which was my first Porsche, um, which is a 08 green. 3RS. What times do you do at Road Atlanta in that car? I don't do time. I track. I track it. Yeah. But I don't care anything you about haven't times. Done the time? I 100% oh, like I'm just curious. Don't drive for time. Okay. If you see me on the track on that car, most yeah. likely I'll be like sideways or something like that, <laughs> or like goofing off okay. or like downshifting for no reason. Like if it's quicker to, to lug third gear through through a corner in that yeah. car, I'll 100% go down the second just so I can shift back. To just so I can shift, shift more. You're just enjoying fun. the drive. Yeah, that car yeah, is yeah. like a hundred percent for, yeah. yeah, for that reason, okay. for fun. Okay. And, and it has like all the race car stuff on it. It's all monoball and it has, you know, adjustable shocks and, and a little bit more arrow that's, you could barely, you would barely notice, but yeah. in it, then it has the, the huge motor in it, which yeah. is a four, two now. Gosh. Um, and it, you know, it's very loud, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's basically like, that car's trouble. It's trouble. Like if you like, I'm definitely going to get a really big ticket in that car, car one day. <laughs> you can't drive that car normal. Like it, it has to, it's just so rowdy. Like it just, yeah, it's, it's, that car's built for one reason and that's just to be rowdy and, yeah. and fun and yeah. in trouble. It's so, loud. It's so loud. It's very loud. <laughs> it's very loud. I have two different exhausts for it and the, that, the, that's the quiet exhaust, yeah. the one that you've oh. heard. Nice. I have a louder. Okay. I have a louder exhaust because my dad. More cowbell. Yeah, my dad cut out the mufflers of his 997 RSR exhaust. He wanted to straight pipe his 997 <laughs> RSR. 
even though the, muff <laughs> the muffler is literally like, a, it's yeah. like see-through. It's, it's like a resonator almost. It's not even like, it's not even a muffler. There's like per rules, you had to have a muffler. Yeah. So they found basically like, it's like this much muffler. So yeah, I have a custom exhaust built with using those mufflers for that car. Continuing the 997, because I love 997 so much, uh, 997 GT2 that I got from you guys, yeah. white and black, black interior car. And it's like very different from the Frog, but 997 is just like the perfect size. I think the 997 Gen 1 is, is and always will be the most beautiful water-cooled 911 um, because of the size and just how, I mean, smooth and kind of tame yeah. the design is of the bumpers and stuff. Yeah. Like, I love the way the stuff looks now. Like a 992 GT3 is like a beautiful car, but like it's there's a lot going on compared to the old the old GT stuff. Agreed. Um, so that car is just it's an everyday 997 in a way. Even though we're really getting to the everyday 911, which is the Dakar. But yeah. yeah, that car I don't know. It's just a special car that you can that's very user friendly and, and you take it to the supermarket you're going you know, on dates you're going up the north georgia mountains and yeah you can do everything with it and yeah. it's a gt car it feels like a gt car and then it has the turbo power yep uh so you get on it it's, yeah it's, you, I had so much fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of my favorite things why i yeah. love that we're local too because when you come by and it's like hey what are we driving today and what are we going to go out and i'm like i just enjoy sitting there in the seat and just watching you drive it and enjoy <laughs> yeah. it and and pull out all the juice out yeah. of it but yeah the, the the black career GT and then the 997 GT2 were probably my favorite rides. With yeah, those were both. Passenger. Those were both really good rides. <laughs> those were both really, really good rides. I had driven both a uh, couple of versions of those cars before. I've driven other career GTs and driven other GT2s. Um, and when I drove the GT, the white GT2 that you guys had, I was like, it felt like it felt it's the best feeling GT2 ready. I'd ever driven. Sorted. Yeah. Uh, it felt amazing, you know, like it just felt right. And I was like, yeah, this is this is definitely coming home with, with me on that. <laughs> and then the Carrera GT, uh, when we had some fun in your black one, <laughs> I had not, I'd driven other Carrera GTs, but I had not driven one with the Olin's coilovers uh, and the new tires yeah, yeah. properly set yeah. up and felt right. So like the car gave me confidence even before I started kind of well, slid it around a little bit, but like it, I felt everything was in check and in tune. Yeah. Uh, and good to go. And yeah. it's only one twentieth of the price of an F1. I'll never yeah, forget that comment when you're driving. Compared you're to like, an F1. <laughs> yeah, you just have to compare. <laughs> but it's it's pretty much all eighty percent of the fun of an F1. <laughs> yeah. One twentieth. Yeah, Sorry, I'm gonna quote you on that forever. I, know, I said that earlier today. Well, but. it's true. I mean, it's true. It's true. You know, it's totally true. And I've driven F1, and F1 is way more difficult. And, and hmm. even even the Carrera GT is is easy to own compared to some of the other yeah. cars that offer a similar experience, yeah. 100%. And that's thanks to Porsche. Yeah. I mean, Porsche makes that, you know, makes that happen, basically. The engineering yeah. from the very get-go and the, the mechanic and dealership and service network that they have. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Porsche, if you're watching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's why, you know, these cars, there's so much value, yeah. you know, in, in this stuff. Um, to finish off the garage, another turbo, 930 turbo. So finally did get a black 9, 930. Oh, cool. Always wanted one, uh, just timing wise. Got it, actually was on Bring a Trailer. It was a pretty good deal. So nice. That's just kind of how it ended up. Yeah. A I lot of people have that story. Tuning, yeah, yeah, I mean, I was yeah. looking at them. I, w I was very patient on that. So I looked at them for like two years and then there was one and I was like, oh, that's the one. I'll just get that one. And uh, I'm gonna build it a little bit more like a street car. Like yeah. a, not a not a hot rod street okay. comfortable street date night car that's the way i look at turbos for some reason which yep. is natural aspray cars are more you know, hmm. racy i guess you could say like yeah just my mind for whatever reason yeah um and then i i did get um the new dakar yeah so i've been daily driving that so that really is the most ultimate versatile do everything like 911. I, I haven't put it on track yet, but I'm, I'm going to 100%. <laughs> That's awesome. Like, I, I, I definitely will. Um, so you have the Safari car, which I, you, it's going to be tough to convince me that Porsche didn't take a note out of your book to make the Dakar, but, you know, we can't prove <clears> that. The, the Safari car is an incredible car, and I've always loved it and wanted to drive it, and now you have a Dakar. What, is, what are the main differences between those two cars? The concept 
of the Dakar that Porsche used is similar to like kind of what I did with the Safari cars because a lot of people had done, first of all, Porsche raced these Safari cars, you know, they were, but they were full on race cars. Yes. In the 60s and 70s and early 80s. Um, a lot of tribute cars were built and a lot of race cars were built for people to race them and stuff. So everyone that I pretty much saw before I, I built mine, like had a roll cage in it, had some, you know, if it was a newer build, it had carbon fiber stuff. It was like, like a race car, um, a lot of race car stuff. And then I just wanted to, like a GT3 is like a, a street car yeah. that like you can take to the racetrack and it'll be fun to drive and it'll do well. Yeah. Um, but you're not going to go race the 24 hours of Le Mans in a G GT3 street car. Like right. it would, wouldn't work. So yeah, the Safari is the same kind of concept, that, you know, so street, it's a road car. We have, I mean, my car now has full aftermarket AC and a lot of comforts. Okay. It's carpeted interior. It's like an RS style interior, but it's totally, you know, a, a road car. You could drive daily drive and I have people that daily drive them. It's based but, on the G body. It's based on the G body. Okay. Yeah, either an SC or a 3.2 Carrera uh, is what we'd like to start with. And we have done a few 930s as well. Okay. Um, oh, fun. But the Safari, like if you're driving down, you know, on a paved road and there's a dirt road and you pass by and you're like, let's go down this What's down there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally just turn around and go down it. You know? Yeah, how go capable is it? It's, I would say the capabilities surprise every person that's ever driven one and some of the things that we do. Okay. Um, if people are familiar with North Georgia trails, Sarah's and Charlie's Creek, we go all the way through those all the way to the top. Wow. Um, like we pass Jeeps, we pass people on the trails that were like, I mean, this guy's like, this little car ain't going to go up that. And like, we just kept on going, <laughs> go through creeks, go through stuff. And that's because the motor's in the rear. You know, we have a, a, a really grippy tire yeah. and we have really good overhang, overhang clearance, short wheelbase. Yep. Um, we have some, you know, protection if you can run into a rock or whatever, the front and back. And it just, I mean, it's the old Beetle concept too. Like, it's just yeah. like great in the snow, like the rear engine, like it just, so just, it's light, it's not heavy, yep. it's narrow. We can go in between, like a lot of these trails we go in are really rutted out. Yeah. Where like, if you are in a Jeep, or like a Bronco, right? You would need like two feet of of ground clearance yeah. to get through because your tires are in the rut. We can straddle the ruts, so like we straight up will straddle them, and like we can go through some things that like you know like a like a Jeep probably will bottom out bottom out on. Interesting. Uh, just because we're we're smaller and more narrow, so really capable on that. I would say plenty capable enough um, for what I'm really trying to do with the project. The main goal is like the fun factor of it. Yeah. So a smooth, so it's fun to do that technical stuff, but the most fun is a smooth gravel road up in the mountains somewhere or out west. We we did I did an event uh, starting in um, Aspen, Colorado. We finished in Alpine, Wyoming. Big fields, a yeah. wide open, yeah. one and a half lane, two lane wide gravel, smooth roads, just twisting through like miles, like twenty. 30 miles long yeah. through the, through the Rockies. Beautiful. Like you can see for, you can see a mile, like we're all, I mean, on those roads, we're going 60, 70, 80 miles an hour. We're, you know, we're hitting corners. Like that's like unbelievable fun that you can do with those cars yeah. and being rear wheel drive only and, and kind of the suspension that we've developed for them, being able to rotate them, being able to slide them is like, it's not hard to do with those yeah. cars. So I have a lot of guys that, have never slid a car in their life. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, they're just like huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slide in their, yeah. Feel like know, Superman. their Porsche. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's cool. Yeah. It's, so that's kind of Has the Has anybody uh, skied behind one yet? No. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Probably going to be happening soon. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> working on something that's happening happening out in Colorado All in right. a couple of months. So, so probably to be, to be seen, a little yeah, bit of yeah. visionary. To be seen. No, what, what, I, what I appreciate about you so much too from that too is your, 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 the community you know, environment of what you've done with the Keen Project. And I think that's so huge, right? This, this Porsche world is so small and what's really important to us too is relationships, as you know. And I think that what you're doing with your community yeah. projects and bringing people together and they have the car there and they feel the sense of camaraderie and it's also an adventure that they're going on too. Like how often do we get to pause in our life and say, you know, unless you're, you're into riding
that, but you're using the tool of a, of a car rather than a horse to do that. And you're out on an adventure. I just think it's so cool. Yeah. It's been a hundred percent. Like that's the very important thing for me. I'm super lucky. The community has been amazing. The, the people that own the cars use them, met all kinds of amazing people. I met a lot of people in the racing world. One thing when I kind of stepped away from the racing world in 2016, I was bummed about is like a lot of interesting people that I wasn't yeah. going to meet. Yeah. Um, but in the, in the safari stuff, like uh, just more interesting, better, like the people, the owners are awesome. And, yeah. and, uh, I've been super lucky and fortunate to get to know a lot of them and a lot of my friends. And yeah, we just did, um, the Appalachian adventure event, which is a yearly event yeah. I do in North yeah. Carolina mountains. Um, river works, river works mm -hmm. just happened, uh, which was new for me, uh, Nash from Ohio social. And I did this, wow. did a car, did a car show. He was like, do you want to do a car show? I was like, I don't know. So we, he, took, he took me up and showed me that facility. And One um, of my favorite stories from that <laughs> is I had somebody uh, say they had never seen Lee Keen run before in their life, but you were running around yeah. like a crazy person <clears throat> during that event, trying to get everything together, trying to get all the cars in place. It, it was, but you guys pulled it off. That event was incredible. At what, thanks. Yeah, yeah, it was great job. Thank that's you. a hard thing. Great job guys. to Nash too and the whole team. Thank that's you guys a really for, for bringing three really amazing cars up. The Carrera GT in that one space. Like when I saw that, that's why I was like, what color? I wanted it because I, I, silver, of course, is, you know, a common color yeah. like for Carrera GTs. Yeah. But like I actually wanted it to be silver for that space. Cool. So I was glad the car was was silver. Um, Any funny stories from behind the scenes of Riverworks that nobody really got this to see maybe a stressful moment or a... Well, yeah, because it was crazy. i would never been on that side of things. I don't think Nash... Nash has done some really cool events, some big stuff on the Beltline yeah. at oh, PC, yeah. all kinds of cool things. Yeah. Um, but I don't think he's done an event that big before. Um, and it wasn't supposed to be that big two weeks before the event. <laughs> oh, gosh. And we were up there on site. And we had, the response was amazing. And the, the, like the, the main, we had main car shows and we had, we had the corrals and the, they were just rolling in. And like the closer we got to the event, the more like each day, like we're looking at the emails rolling in. I'm like, dude, we're like, so like national, I'm like, where do you want to put, we got this car going in. And then it's like, continues to go. So like two weeks before the event, I'm like, we need to close all this. Cause we had our original plan, which was, I mean, really what happened was, was our year three plan as far as the amount of people. Wow, Car awesome. wise, oh the gosh. amount of cars we had, not, I wouldn't say half the cars, but we, we opened up a lot of new areas, which mean we had to place those cars, which means somebody had to do that the morning of the event. So it's not only like we we're only, you know, somebody staying there instead of letting 10 cars, you know, they let 15 cars park. Like this is a whole another space. So that's like a whole another person has to be there or has to be there at a different time slot. So two weeks before the event, we were at the venue and Nash is like, we can open up this, we can open, we can, I can fit, we can fit 18 cars here. So we fit, we fit eight cars right here. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, we're two weeks away. That's not part of the plan. So we had like a, like it, the whole thing was awesome. Like we had, we oh, you bonded, never like that. we had, we had a great, we have, our relationship is awesome. Yeah. And we really enjoy working with each other, but like we had like a, and he was like, you just got to trust me. And really, I'm glad we did. So we basically more or less opened up the floodgates. I didn't want, we didn't want to turn people away either. Yeah. We still shut down registration and stuff to give us plenty of time. But like, yeah, two weeks before the event, we were at on site and Nash is basically like more or less not begging or telling, begging, telling me that like we have to open it up. Yeah. And we did, which. I'm glad we did, but yeah. which is why I was running around like crazy. So that morning was, and I, I got there Thursday around noon and I was running around that place until Friday night and like 1 a.m. But <laughs> Jeez, yeah, man. and then Saturday morning. Yeah, it was, it was really crazy, but it was really cool. It was an awesome It was event. really, really cool. Some of the best people, I mean, the community that we see in the Porsche world was all, they were all there. It's just the location and the people, both. Yeah, Fantastic. I mean, and the cars. We're Some we were really super cool lucky. Cars. Yeah, amazing yeah. car. Yeah, a lot of yeah. amazing cars. Yeah. Um, I was always confident. You know, we would have good cars. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the logistics of things and making sure everything went smoothly. Like 
all the food trucks are like, how many people are going to be there? We're like, well, we've never done it before. We're not really sure. And there's like a lot of unknowns. Next year will be so much easier because yeah. there's so, yeah, many, yeah, yeah. so many more unknowns. Yeah. But it ended up being an amazing, amazing deal. Yeah. And, and also, like, the venue was just so perfect for it, really. And the weather was perfect. Yeah. Um, yes, it was. We got, yeah, it was. Chilly in the morning. Yeah. Warm in the afternoon. Yeah. 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 It was awesome. So you got to drive some cars today while you're here. Uh, I want to focus on the roof, though, the 2007 Roof RGT, because I haven't heard. You took it out with Jonathan. Maybe you guys, you're probably talking while you're driving. I haven't heard your impressions of that car yet. So lay it on me. What are the impressions of the 2007 Roof RGT? I love it. First of all, I love it. Okay. Um, I've driven, like, every 997. That's now I've driven every 997, I guess. Um, and... That car, I've been, I didn't, it was at Riverworks, but I was so busy yeah. running around, I didn't even get to look at it, and I wanted to <laughs> so bad. And I, I wanted to look at the interior. I'd seen the exterior, you know, just walking by, but I wanted to look at the interior, really spend time with the interior. Yeah. So I finally did get to spend time in the interior, and one of the best parts also is driving it. <laughs> you, get to, yeah. you get to be, and well, also drive it. Yeah. So you're in, just being, yeah, I think the, the thing that stands out is the car feels amazing for sure, but also being, able to you know you're, when you're driving it you're encapsulated in that wonderful interior it's all the, the blue with almost like a tiny tiny bit of of purple i mean it's really similar to the, G, the 993 gt2 that yes. you guys have yep. um performance is is great that car is built in 07 um so the gen 1 3 rs had just came out yeah. um the performance is is more performance than a gen 1 3 rs hmm. Um, but those cars now, I mean, you know, that cars, these cars are getting older. Like it's not all about performance anymore. Like I was telling, uh, Jonathan about a guy that bought a 4.0 RS just because it would be the fastest, best street car Porsche on the racetrack. That's yeah. why he got it. You know, yeah. it was the best, but you know, those the feel is so important now with these cars, even 997. I mean, you know, you don't realize that they are getting older and they're mm -hmm. becoming i don't want to say classic but like they're 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 in a different category so yeah the, the car felt amazing it felt super refined of course you would expect from a roof yeah motor was was really strong really liked it had the torque that a 3.6 doesn't have but also that top end that a 3.6 has yeah it had that too yeah um but the the I mean, the paint's crazy. I don't. I mean, I, a white one, I think, would be really pretty. I like. I like the bodywork a lot. The, well, I like the flares. Yeah. I, like, I really yeah. like the flares. Yeah. But the in, the interior is um, unbelievable. Really, yeah. the interior was some. I mean, there's like a little bit of the roll cage is on the B pillar. You know, there's like a bar there, and yep. it's, you can kind of see like the interior, the upholstery work, and everything. Wrapped in and Alcantara. The, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's everything's wrapped in in, in beautiful leather and alcantara and it's I craftsmanship know. i think that's what roof's going after you know it's like it's like what porsche exclusive would have done on a 997 right or special wishes or saunder saunder <clears throat> works would go and it's really aged like you said well but it's it's the craftsmanship of all the tactile alcantaras on the roll bar and the leathers and doing all that like we were talking about you can appreciate too with your your projects and interior yeah. work how much goes into all yeah. that detail yeah. with the the stitching and the leather wrap of this and tucking things i mean it's it's hard to get that correct. And then for it to age, like you said, it's 2007, for it to age where it's got plenty of time and it's aging well. Oh, man. You know, it's 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 fun. And you can say now you've driven pretty much every 997, if you consider that a Porsche, right? Because yeah. that would be the most, would be the one of the rarest variants of 997 would be a roof a roof 997. Yeah. And because otherwise it's GT2 RS, which there's 500 of them. Yeah. Really. Yeah. So way, way more. You yeah. think you've, you know, it's like for me, I know personally, it was like, I think I've experienced every Porsche, but then I get into roof, which are actually Porsche chassis. And it's like, I haven't experienced every Porsche. Yeah. Yeah. That's the fun thing about, about roof is, I mean, they, they've totally an 11, even their new carbon tub thing is like a rear engine, like so 911 inspired, but it's like, the 911 is how many variants of, the, of a 992 is there? 21? <laughs> yeah. I mean, really? Yeah, over 20, yes. It's the most versatile sports car in the world ever made. There's no arguing that yeah. for sure. Marketing yeah. got a hold of those 992s. Oh <laughs> yeah, 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 there's a lot. There's, 
There's a lot. But that, I mean, that's what the people want. I mean, I think Porsche right now can't build them fast enough. But yeah, that's what, <laughs> but yeah, being able to do what Roof did with that, the, the, it, it, there's so many roof things about, yeah. I mean, it's, it's totally a 997 interior, like a 997 GT. Yeah. But it's all blue, which makes it really cool. But then there's so much roof stuff too. It's like, uh, it's just really well done. Okay. I think the interior is just, I mean, an 11 out of 10. It's just out of the park. Yeah. Right. I just love, I just love that. I like, love the whole car, but like, I'm just in love with the interior. Yeah, yeah. I really am. So the other car you got to drive today was also kind of a hot rod, right? From a, from a <laughs> legitimate builder, a legitimate company. Yeah. So overall, I mean, you're getting into projects yourself. What are your thoughts? I mean, there's, there's a huge community now of Singer, Gunther Works, uh, Roof, all of these guys. Don't put Roof with this. <laughs> Roof is different. Roof is different. <laughs> They've been doing it longer, and they use real chassis. I get it. But you get my point is that there are a ton of, of houses right now that are, that are building 911s. Everything from Singer, which is jewelry, to the AP today, which you drove, that is more performance-oriented. So there's a lot of people out there modifying 911s versus the purists, <laughs> like the 73 RS that you rode in and drove. Where do you stand? Do you think all the modifications and all the places that are modifying these dynamics, do you think it's a good thing? Or are you, do you lean more towards the purist side? Yeah, I mean, that's a, a complex, long answer. First of all, I love that the market is there for these companies to exist. Yes. I'm one too. The Keen Project totally is right, a, exactly. Is taking a 911 and then have, making a new concept, more or less a certain type of build trying to you know market that as a as a a new car or as a as a um like a gt3 is a gt3 and a carrera s is an s and then so far um so the market's there the market's super strong uh it shows the versatility again of the 911 yeah it should, and then it shows that you can do it from nine you can do that with 996s 997s you can go back as far back as the short wheelbase car in the in the 60s um I'm known, I guess, for, cause an off-road guy, cause the Keen Project. Like, you know, I raced and then I did the Keen Project and stuff. But like, I have a pure side of me too. I have a tuner side. Like, I love. I used to do a bunch of Japanese tuner stuff. So, oh, cool. Obviously, modifying 911s, I'm totally fine with it because I have a lot that are, and we do a lot of modifications to the safaris. Um, but I have pure s stuff too um, that I want to, I want, and I appreciate. And yeah, so it's a. Yeah, it's a complex, long, long answer. I'm like, I just love that the market is is there, the consumer is there, the builders are there. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of passion. Yeah. Um, I love a perfectly restored car. I, I'm not gonna, you know, it, it, some hot rod stuff. I'm not gonna, you know, turn my nose up at it. Like, I'm. I have my opinions about things. Um, Sometimes people do things, you know, but I usually don't totally make them known. But like, I, I love the fact that people are doing so much with these cars. Like when somebody else builds a Safari, it's, it's good for me. I don't look at it as competition. There's a lot of other guys doing amazing builds. Yeah. Like that just makes it more known. If they build something awesome and it, and it trends on Instagram and, and like everybody's paying attention to it, that's like a bunch of new eyes that never even imagined that an old 911 would be lifted and go off road. Like that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, it's good for for it's good for me. It's good for it's good for everybody. Yeah. Um, so I love collaboration for success is better. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's no reason to be like yeah. It's not like a crazy you know competitive. I hate you. Whatever. Mine's better. Kind of. I, I don't like that mentality mm -hmm. at all. Um, when I went to buy my 911 SC there was uh the person that i bought it from um it was two people one when they found out what i was going to do with what i was going to do with it literally was like we're not selling you the car so like that was my start oh my to the safari because i always wanted the safari con concept I, I wanted to build one. and literally like i it was like for a second there was like actually we're we're not selling you the car because you're gonna lift it and take it off road and i'm like well, the car's for sale. Your job is to sell <laughs> yeah. car. Like, 
I'm buying the car. Like, this makes no sense at all. I give you money, <clears throat> yeah. you give me a car. This is very this is great. Pretty simple. weird. But it shows the passion of the, of the purists. And, yeah. and I'll never, you know, I love passion. If somebody does something, even if I don't agree with it, if it if it's, um, stems from passion, like, I usually will let that slide yeah um and then yeah the other person in this deal was like no we're gonna sell the car and gave him actually a little bit of confidence because that person knew more of me and kind of what i was going to do and nobody really knew what i was going to do at the time and i had a ton of people say you shouldn't do that you're going to ruin a 911 yep. sc I'm well sure. the 911 sc i bought was in some lady's garage for 10 years like the interior had mold in it it hadn't run in in 10 years like the car was I mean, I gave it a new life in yeah. a way. We, we've That's given awesome. new life to a bunch of bunch of new That's cars. Right. So like the purists can, like I definitely, there, and there's still some out there, like we shouldn't do this, you know, the car should be perfect. And and that's cool, I understand like that, what, what they're into, but like you shouldn't be, um, you know, against somebody else or negative towards somebody else. But yeah. now that, I mean, we're pretty established now, the whole, you know, trend is more established. and. I mean, Porsche did it. Like the same, the people were like, "You can't do that." I'm like, Porsche did it in the <laughs> early '70s, yeah. the East African Safari. They did it to '73 RSs. Right, right. Like, why can't I do it? Right. Like, I do, I'm not doing it to a '73 R. I'm doing it to an '81 yeah. SC. Yeah. Um, but it, everybody's more acceptable of it now. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's again going back to the variety of a of a 911. Like I have, um, you know, one car specifically that I really want my 993 rs i really want it period yeah. i really want to keep the factory shocks on it mm -hmm. i really don't want to change the aftermarket subframes or engine mounts or anything like that yeah, yeah it's a performance-based car and i could easily do a few things to make it um better but i i really want it like a like a time machine like i really want it like what that car was actually in 95 yeah. Yeah. and um other than putting like way bigger tires on it than what it came with <laughs> that car's bone stock yeah uh, and i love that i love that about it and then i have things that i tune and, and that's just why you need more 911 that's why this is why people have like 5 10 20 i mean i know somebody with 50 911 i think yeah well they each have a purpose right i think it's when we, we we talk about collections around here too like that is a collection of Porsches right but each one has a purpose and has a reason by which you have it and some will be period correct you know, maybe collectible or ones that you just want to experience just as they left the factory. And then some that'll be modified that you'll be enjoyed to be used the way you want to use them. And as long as they have a, make sense and have a purpose. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they make you, as long as they make you happy. You right. Make that individual happy. Right. And if they have the means to do it, then, then go right ahead. Yeah. So, yeah, so, and people do, people do way, way crazier stuff than, than, you know, I do, <laughs> car, <laughs> yeah. car wise. Yeah. But, um, sure. but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it used to be a slippery slope, with the, especially with the off-road stuff. People really hated it. The, the purists hated it. Um, in the last 10 years, it's changed a lot. Yeah. I mean, even 10 years ago, Porsche didn't even really, like all their Dakar and East African Safari and Perry Dakar stuff from the 70s and 80s, like those cars were like tucked away. All the, all the old post, like all the stuff they had that you know they weren't marketing it like if you go back and look at porsche ag and their marketing program for 2013 yeah there's like going to be no east african safari and no perry dakar i mean the 959 rothman's car yeah. has always been around yeah. so there's like there might be that yeah but they're not showing off the 953 and they're not showing off the all white 953 that they built that was going to be a production car and they're not talking about East African, and they're not, you it's know, interesting. building. One of the 22 992 variants isn't an off-road. So yeah. a lot's changed in the past 10 years. And, it, and for the better, I mean, it's really cool. And now they have a production. It's the first production off-road 911 that they've ever done. Yeah. They did almost do it with the 953s, but that car was like a more like a race car mm -hmm. that they were going to. That would have been like an SCR. That was SCRS time, actually, too. Yeah. So that would have been like an SCRS, the way an SCRS is a street car. Hmm. Um, but now, yeah, now they have the Dakar. And, yeah. and they're, they're, they're talking on. about, I guess, offering a package. I don't know. There's a lot of rumors that they're going to offer a more normal package, kind of like a Accessories package. Audi All Road or whatever, yeah. something yeah. like that, you know? Yeah. Like an option mm -hmm. yeah. for like a 
for I don't know what it would be a four S maybe or something like that. Yeah. So who knows? But anyway, yeah. the concept works because I've been daily driving my Dakar around Atlanta and I hit a couple of gravel roads with it too. Nice. It's, well, and it performs. It performs. All right. It's actually too fast, but <laughs> <laughs> it's like on the gravel, it's fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of grip. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm really curious. I got one question for you too that I'm interested in. So one, one car that potentially got away from you during your time of, you know, you've been buying cars 10, 15 years, you know, we're always chasing cars here and what's the next thing we want to, <clears> you know, kind of look into. So it's fun. But what's, what's one thing, one car that you maybe feel like got away or, or got out of reach in terms of how the market, you know, sort of, sort of moves? Yeah. Well, I don't know if you know the answer already, but I don't. Yeah. Well, I think, Prayer GT is probably okay. one of those. Yeah. Every Porsche guy has a story of like, oh, I should have bought a car when I should have bought exactly. a car then. That's it. Like everybody, like yeah. we just, if you live, if you were into Porsches 10, 15 years ago, you have that story. I mean, some guy tried to, was pushing his beautiful 911 SC on me. Like I was, I was flying RC planes like 13 years ago. He was like, I don't want like 10 grand for it or something like that. <laughs> You know, the same car now is going up. It's probably like a $60,000. I mean, it's six times yeah. what it was. Yeah. You know, that kind of percentage is crazy. But, um, but yeah, I mean, Carrera GT, uh, not that I won't ever own one one day. Mm -hmm. I certainly still yeah. hope to. <laughs> we'll have the VHS where we, yeah. we, we, we convert it to. A but, I mean, the price, you know, when COVID, the price points of everything obviously is crazy now or not, are not crazy. Well, we, we were talking about, I think on your Instagram page about like somebody was saying the Carrera GT was really undervalued is the mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. So like, yeah. I had friends that bought them uh, when they were very undervalued and. Um, I was recommending them to all my friends. Yeah, yes. Anybody who would listen. You're a good, you're a good friend. <laughs> um, and you're right. I mean, they're just, yeah, just incredible cars. So there's some race cars too. Um, you know, old race cars, cheap yeah. back in the day, yeah. like, and rare race car, race cars are tricky in the Porsche world because, mm -hmm. um, they were cheap. Like if you look at like a 997 cup, like, an, like a 2007 997 cup, I think is like a $70,000 car. Like those yeah. Falcon, like those yeah. Falcon cars. The RSR, the RSRs, those are, you know, an RSR. 100%. Well, RSRs are crazy rare. Yeah. Very special. The Porsche's not even making them anymore. So an RSR, as far as the race car world, is, has always been the top. 73 RSR, 74, I mean, top. Um, 993 RSR is like one of the best cars you'll ever drive. Like, great race car, like, just yeah. incredible, incredibly fun. Um, but yeah, RSRs, and, and if you look at some of these RSRs, what they're selling for now, the 997s, mm -hmm. I mean, they're they're cheap. Like a 997 Cup car is, is oh, yeah. cheap. Like if you compare a 997 Cup to a, a 997 GT3 street car, yeah. like the difference. And, and it's one's a racing version. One has way more performance. One's way more rare. And it's half. But race cars is interesting thing. So yeah, there's been some race cars, some older race cars, like because the 993, any, any 993 race car is, is rare. Yeah. 996 Cup, I wouldn't consider it rare. 997 Cup, Cup cars I wouldn't consider rare, but any, any R, any RSR, mm -hmm. any Porsche factory race car is extremely, extremely rare. Have you so, seen any 993 Cups or RSRs at the market? 993, so 993, all the 993 cups that I have, cause I've, that's what I learned to drive in. We yeah. still have ours. Um, and uh, we'll probably always have that car. That car is just a really, really cool car. Um, but yeah, they're, they're always like, they don't go for what they should. Yeah, like, a, okay. like a cup doesn't go for what, it, and it never has. Yeah. And I don't know when it will. Yeah. So like if you're buying it for an investment, it might not be a good investment mm -hmm. because in five years it might be the same price yeah. but if you look at at the rareness of it and what it actually is i mean it's a race car version of the rs yeah like it and it's you know it's most unless it has some kind of crazy history or something like that it's you know uh less money than than an rs yeah. so there's been some um yeah some race car stuff but 
part of it. I guess. Thanks, yeah. thanks for sharing that. There, there'll always be a courage to here. So yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like knowing the friend that has a boat. You know, a place that's always going to have a courage. Yeah, he's, 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 he's a one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know when, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but so, now, final question: What's next for Lee Keen? What What are you? Is Keen Project your main focus right now? Is the social aspect of it, like the Riverwork stuff, is that? At the Appalachian event, is that your focus? What's What's your focus for the next year? This year was crazy because I didn't do a single race. It was the first time I didn't actually wow. race, do a race since 2002 or something like that. It's been 20 years. Yeah. Um, and I was just as busy as I'd ever been. Part of that was you know, being in an RV for a month. But um, <laughs> I mean, events, yeah, I'd always, I like to be, I definitely like to be the jack of all traits in the Porsche world, I guess. Part of that is master of none. The, the last part is like master of none, yep. but, I, but I try. Yeah. Um, so events, yeah, builder, driver, I still do some, I did some filming with Porsche this year. Cool. Uh, we did some really cool stuff um, right by Mount Rushmore. Um, I, I did, uh, you know, a little bit of stuff at Rinsport um, for them, driving stuff, and still like to drive for cameras. I actually love to drive for cameras. So I still will continue to do a little bit of that stuff. Uh, probably will race my vintage car a little bit next year. Cool. Um, but I'm really focused on, yeah, Keen Project. I have ideas for Keen Project. I have other concepts um, other than just the Safari okay. um, that I would like to do. Okay. Um, I just, we don't have the capacity to do it until we fulfill more deliveries. We have seven in production now. Wow. Um, we're out, you know, for, for years. Yeah. Uh, how, many, how many do you do a year again? Well, I would like to do five a year. Okay. Uh, that would be, we didn't do five. We, we did almost seven one year. Um, a couple of years ago, we did two, which is really slow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, five a year would be good. I'll yeah. never, I'll never, we'll never pump out 20 or 25 a year. It's just not going to happen. So they're rarer than a roof RGT. Easy there. There man. you go. Well, no, we've built, <laughs> we've, we've built more than I've built 35. I appreciate that. We've, we've built, we've built 35. Okay. So okay. yeah. Um, and I, and I, and I'm definitely going to keep going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, focus on that. I mean, you know, it's, I love the design side of side of it with the interiors and all the different stuff mm -hmm. coming up with colors. Um, I've all enjoyed talking to you about that too, even just on courage tees or any, any, any car. It's like, what, what, what would that look good in? What color would, would look good or what interior would yeah, look good? Yeah. I love, I love talking about it. I love yeah. imagining, a doing anything to a Carrera GT would be really cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I love that. I love the design stuff. And then we're still developing things a little bit. I mean, for the most part, we're pretty set on what the cars are, um, what their intended use is. Uh, and then also like, yeah, this Riverworks thing is really interesting. Yeah. Um, it was, I mean, we're really excited about next year. We're a ton of, um, you know, after the event, a ton of response, a, a ton of stuff. Uh, we have a lot of ideas we can do. Uh, we're going to do it about the same time, same place next year. Um, so, yeah, that's cool. And that, that's like, yeah, that was more work than I was thinking it was going to be, too. Yeah. Um, but was totally rewarding and, and super worth it. So and next year should be easier because you kind of know. Be, should be easier. Oh, it's going to be easier. Okay. I will not be running. Well, I might, I might be, be seen. Running. I might be seen running. Okay. But I won't <laughs> be running around like crazy like I was this year. Yeah. And I'm going to have a better bike. I'm going to have a better e-bike. Good. My little e-bike. Yeah, I yeah, borrowed yeah, yeah. my e-bike from Nash. And yeah. It didn't really get it up the hill. <laughs> I had to sneak. Those were some steep hills. <laughs> I had to tack. Those are yeah, some steep yeah hills. it was, it was, it is a steep hill. Yeah. So that was probably the main yeah. issue. Yeah. yeah. Cool, man. Well, thank you so much for coming out and being with us today. It was a blast That's getting awesome. no, to awesome. ride in some cars with you and to talk. So it's always a pleasure. Yep. It's yep. just cool being here. Yeah. Everywhere you look. Yeah. Something cool. Something and always cool. driving cars. Every corner. Yeah. 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 I just really appreciate your friendship, you know, and just that we're both in the same town and just getting to hang out when we do. So thank you. Yeah. And hosting the way you do at your house. It's I mean, it's amazing. just the, the community you've built is incredible. Yeah. So. yeah. I mean, we're, it, we're fortunate to have an amazing community and yeah, Porsche based here and everything. I mean, it's just, Atlanta is just a great place. It's a great honest. place to be. It, it is. Really is great community. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we'll check you on the next one. Thank you so much.